What to do when faith falters? What to do when faith falters? If you'll turn your Bibles with me to Genesis, the 12th chapter, I'll share there with you this morning. Genesis, the 12th chapter. That's only a few pages over. It's on page 12 in my Bible, but it's helpful for you. Genesis, the 12th chapter. And we're going to talk about Abraham. What to do when faith falters? I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's only 20 verses, if you don't mind. Uh, starting in the 12th chapter, verse 1, it says, And now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of the country for thy kindred and for thy father's house to the land that I will shew thee, verse 2. And I'll make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed, verse 4. So Abram departed as the Lord spoke unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all of their substance that they had gathered, the souls that they had gotten into Haran. And they went forth into the land of Canaan, and to the land of Canaan they came. Verse 6, Abraham passed through the land to the place of Shechem, and to the plain of Morah, uh, and of the Canaanites, was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram. And said, now Abram is the same person as Abraham. God doesn't change his uh, name until the 17th chapter and verse 6 and 7. I mean, verse 5 and 6. 
and he changes his name then. And that's and the reason he changed his name to Abraham is about the covenant and keeping the covenant. Verse 7, The Lord appeared upon Abram and said unto thy seed, Will I give this land? And they built an altar upon the Lord who appeared upon him. And he removed from thence into the mountain of the east of Bethel, and he pitched a tent, having Bethel on his west and Ai, uh, Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abraham journeyed and still towards the south. Verse 10, And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to so journey there, for the famine was uh, grievous in the, law, in the land. And it came to pass that when he had come near unto the, uh, to enter into Egypt, he said unto Sarah, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass that when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is my wife, and they shall kill me, and, uh, and they will save thee alive. And uh, say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my, and my soul shall live because of thee. Verse 14, And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians held the woman that she was very fair. Uh, and verse 15, The princess also said to Pharaoh and saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. Verse 16, He entered to Abra, uh, and he entreated uh, Abram well for her sake, and he had uh, sheep, oxen, and asses, and men slaves, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. Verse 17 through 20, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with a great plague because of Sarah, Abram's wife. And uh, Pharaoh came to Abraham and said, What is it that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why sayest thou she is my sister, so I might have taken her to me to wife? Therefore, behold, thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men accord, uh, concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this chapter in the book of Genesis. I thank you for what it says. I thank you for what an illustration it could be. Lord, what are we supposed to do? What do we do when our faith falters? And Lord, faith does falter. There are Christians here today. And I'll be the first one to sign up and say, faith has faltered many times in believers. And so Lord Abraham, one of the greatest stars in the Hebrew nation, is sharing with us a wonderful thing. But God, it's useless unless we open our hearts, unless we receive what you desire for us to receive. So God, remove all the obstacles that we may hear what your word says, not what mine, but yours. And Lord, may you speak to us, may you strengthen us, may you encourage us through this word. But Lord, may we know that faith falters. May we learn that lesson today. And God, I pray your blessings now as we go further. Let us be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise and we pray this in your precious and holy name Jesus Christ amen what to do when faith falters the brightest star in the Hebrew heaven was Abraham Abraham who was a man that, that uh, was called the friend of God matter of fact Abraham is the man who was honored not only by the Jews but by the Christians and also the Muslims alike he was one of the greatest men that ever lived and his name was Abraham and that's who we're talking about this morning. What do we do when our faith falters? Abraham's claim to fame is his faith. Matter of fact, they called him in Romans, the fourth chapter, verse 11, the father of all that believe. Matter of fact, we've got to realize that in the Bible, it tells us in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 8, where all the Hebrews, all of where God's heroes are listed, he is listed as one of the great heroes of faith of all times. And so today I want to give you three things. And I pray that you will talk about those three things. You'll let them uh, mingle within your heart and that you'll hear them, but you will reply to them. The first one is Abraham's response of faith. The second one would be Abraham's relapse of faith. And then Abraham's return of faith. You see, you're going to find out today, and I hope you find out today, and I hope we're ready and willing to say within our hearts and within our lives that Christians sometimes has faith that falter. And I hope you learned that lesson today. But you've got to open your ears because I want you to remember God will not only hold you accountable for what you heard, but he will hold you accountable for what you should have heard if you were listening. So pay attention. Pay attention. God's going to hold us responsible. So the Bible says in Matthew 9, verse 29, it says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Not according to your fame, 
Not according to your reputation. Not according to your fortune. Not according to your friends. Not according to your faith. But according to your faith. Folks, but faith is a vital, important part of Christianity. It's vital. It's super vital. The difference between infinite and finite is the difference between faith and unbelief. My friends, faith can do anything that God can do. And God can do anything. And so we must understand, and I hope that we learn to trust God by our faith. Matter of fact, it says in Hebrews 11, verse 6, right before he lists all this, the heroes of faith, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what do you do when your faith falters? Well, Abraham is going to give us a great lesson here, and I pray that you'll open your hearts and receive that lesson. Look at verse 1 through 5 of the 12th chapter of Genesis, and we will see the first thing that I want to point out to you. It says in verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get thee up out of thy country, and get from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and unto a land I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, in verse 2, and make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4, So Abram departed. That's not a good word. As, he, uh, uh, as the Lord spo had uh, spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old, and he departed out of Haran. Listen to verse 5. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, and his brother's son, and all the substance that they had gathered, that their souls had been given in Haran. And they went forth into the land of Canaan, and to the land of Canaan they came. So what's the first thing? Listen. If we've got to realize that, that what, what to do when faith falters, the first thing is the response of Abraham's faith. What is our response? What was your response this past year in 2023? What will you be your response in 2024? How did you respond in your faith? You see, I want you to notice his response. God spoke. Abram listened. Not only did he listen, he went. My friends, faith is a response to a revelation. It's a response. Faith is just saying what God has said and acting on it. That's what faith is. Believing what God has said and acting on what God has said in our lives. And God has said a lot of things. But what is going to be our response? He's, God spoke, Abraham went. Now, I want you to realize there can't be faith unless God speaks. And there is no faith until you respond. We must respond to faith. You see, God speaks, you respond. When you respond to what God says, that's faith. That's faith. Matter of fact, what does it say in Romans 10 verse 17? It says what? Faith comes by hearing and by hearing of what? The word of God. So how are we responding to the Word of God? Are we ready to open our ears? Are we ready to receive the Word of God? Are we ready and willing to say, God, my faith has faltered this past year, but I want to make sure that in 2024 that my faith is going to be alive, that it's going to be excited, that it's going to be on fire for Jesus Christ like never before. Unless you hear God speak, there is no faith. There are a lot of things that people respond to other than the Word of God. And that's where we find Christians today. They're responding to the wrong things instead of the Word of God. Folks, we are Bible believers. We believe in Genesis to Revelations. Amen? And if we believe it, we're going to live it. And if we're going to live it, we're going to show it. And when we show it, people are going to come running because they're going to want to have the faith that you have. Faith is hearing and by hearing of the Word of God. Folks, we need the Word of God. We need to respond to the Word of God. We don't need to just listen this morning. We need to respond to it. What is the Word of God saying to me? Am I going to respond in 2024? Or is it just going to be another year that just goes by and we waste our time just sitting on pews instead of responding in faith? Folks, I don't know about you, but I believe what God has said, and I want to respond to it. I want to say, God, I believe in it. God said he can do miracles. I believe that God still does miracles in our 21st, 21st century. Amen? I mean, my, my God is not dead. Listen, faith is not rooted in human motivation. That's the first thing I'll tell you. He, God spoke, he responded, and when he responded, I want you to realize faith is not rooted in hum, human motivation. Faith is not a response to that motivation. Nothing wrong with positive thinking. 
Nothing wrong at all. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But folks, that's not faith. Listen closely. They're going to build a temple called the Tower of Babel. And if you will, look at, if you'll turn over just for one minute to the 11th chapter and read with me. I'm going to read it to you, verse 3 and 4. I want to show you something about human motivation. Because some people believe that they got to have human motivation to respond to God through the work of faith. Now listen to this. In the third chapter, verse 3 and 4. And they said one to another, Go, let us make a brick and burn them thoroughly. And that uh, they had a brick from the stone and slime and had they for, uh, uh, for mortar. Listen to it. Now here it comes. And they said, Let us uh, build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heaven. Let us make a name. Let us be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Did you hear it? Now listen. Listen. What did they say? Did you hear it? They said they're going to build this Tower of Babel and, and they're going to do it on human motivation. We don't need human motivation. We just need to God speak and we need to respond. We need to be obedient. What did they say when they're going to build this tower? Let us, let us, let us. Did you read that? Well, then guess what? Look at the 12th chapter, verse 1 and 2. Here's, listen to it. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee unto thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house and unto the land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless uh, thee and make thy name and that shall be a blessing. Verse 3, And I shall bless them that bless thee and I'll curse them that curseth thee. Now let me just stop there. Do you see the difference between failure and faith? What did it say in 11th chapter, verse 3 and 4? Let us, let us, let us. Let us is human motivation. What did God say? I will, I will, I will three times in verse 1, 2, and 3. Now, my friends, that's the difference. When you respond to what God says, that's faith. No, it says, I will, I will, I will not let us, let us. Folks, we can't do anything without God. We need God, and we need to have faith, and our faith will falter, but it's not gonna, it's going to falter when we do it in human motivation. We can't do anything, but God can do it all. Faith is not positive thinking, and my friends, I don't know about you, but I've heard a lot of TV preachers in my lifetime, and I want to tell you there's a lot of them on that TV that says, name it and claim it. Now, you listen to me closely. You cannot name it and claim it. God names it, and then you claim it. You see, in, in Genesis 11 chapter, they tried to name it and claim it, and the tower crumbled. But look in the 12th chapter, God says, I will, and Abraham believed. He believed. He says, I believe in you, God. I have faith in you. I'm responding to what you've said, and it's not human motivation. The second thing I'll tell you about the response of Abraham's faith, it was not by human motivation that he responded, but faith is not rooted in human merit. Do you know what Abram, Abraham was called, what he was doing before he was uh, a follower of God? He was known to be a partaker of idolatry. Uh, he was a pagan. Do you know what, what Abraham did? He worshipped a moon god. Folks, he had nothing to offer God. Nothing to offer God. But God broke through the darkness of his mind. See, faith is not rooted in human motivation. It's not rooted in human merit. God spoke. He believed it. Matter of fact, it says it in Romans, the fourth chapter, verse 3 through 5. It says this. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now unto him that worketh in, uh, is to reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, and believeth not on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now my friends, the third verse of that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto his righteousness. How did Abraham get uh, Righteousness. My friends, not by working, not by joining a church, not by getting baptized, not by believing in the Ten Commandments, folks. No, he believed God. And my friends today, if you could ever get saved uh, working for it, it means God owes you salvation. And my friends, last time I checked, God 
doesn't owe you salvation. So when I think about, does my faith falter? Well, it will falter. And folks, you'll never be the Christian that you're supposed to be if your faith is faltering because you're doing it by human motivation. Oh, I'm doing it because mom and dad. Or I'm doing it because of human merit. You cannot work your way to faith. But the third thing in the first chapter of uh, the 12th chapter there, verse 1, faith is not rooted in human mentality. God told Abraham to go to a place and I'll show it to you. Isn't that what it says in verse 1? Verse 8 says, Abraham went not knowing where. That's in Hebrews 11, 8. It says he went somewhere but didn't know where it was. Now listen to me. Can you imagine uh, him packing? Can you imagine him packing for this trip that God's called him to go somewhere? He heard God. He believed God. He had faith in God. And all his neighbors see him packing. He says, where are you going? I don't know. How long are you going to be gone? I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. Well, why are you going? God told me to. Now, you listen to me very closely. <laughs> They're all saying, are you crazy? They're saying, Abraham, you're going because God spoke to you? Now, my friends, here's, here's a key. Here's a key. That some of you need to put the shoe on and you need to fit and you need to wear it. It's not on human mentality. Listen, here's the shoe. If you are a true believer of God and you have faith in God, and when God speaks, you respond, this world will not understand you. They will not understand you. You see, when God speaks, a true believer with true faith is just, just obedient. You see, the world says seeing is believing, but the Bible teaches that believing is seeing. You see, he stepped out, and so many people today will not step out, and, and, and they're so, I don't know about you, but I am so tired of monotonous lifestyles in this world and society that we live in. You've got to step out. Are you tired of being dull? Are you tired of being the same? Folks, step out on your faith when God speaks and do what God that calls you to do. You can't do it through human motivation. You can't do it through human merit. You can't do it through human uh, mentality. You've got to say, God, I'm going to cut loose when you speak. And some of you are so scared of what somebody else may say because they're chandeliers in the sanctuary because they're some golden god. Some of you won't step out because you're worried about what somebody will say if you stand up and say hallelujah or raise your hand and say amen. Folks, Abraham stepped out when he didn't have to step out because he had faith and he believed in what God said. And folks, if you believe in what God says, you better do what God tells you to do because that's what faith is. You see, I want you to realize he responded to a revelation from God. Folks, if it was not for revelation of God, I wouldn't be standing in your pulpit today. Because I can promise you, I didn't sign up to come to five degree weather. I didn't. Like I said, you get a fat man cold, he's going to freeze. How about this new year? Will you stop ignoring what God says? And believe him I mean honestly believe him will you be obedient and you know this 2023 was this church obedient to God last year did we have faith and step out and say God we're gonna step out on faith and we're gonna follow you and we're gonna desire you we're gonna hear what you say and we're gonna do it by human motivation we're not gonna do it by human merit we're not gonna do it by our mentality we're gonna do it because we believe in you we got to stop ignoring what God says and be obedient we, we must respond to the revelation given to us by our Lord. And so very often we muffle, muffle our faith because of what other people may think or what our reputation may be or what our friends and family may think. Today I want to share with you, he stepped out of the normal box. He got out of the boat and he started walking on water because Abraham believed. Today I ask you, do you believe? Do you have faith? Do you, or has your faith faltered this past year? Now listen, I wish I could stop right there. If there was a story that I could stop at, it would be right there. I wish I could stop at how he responded. And I encourage you to be that responder today. Just to step up and step out and say, God, I have faith in you. I believe in you. I'm going to be obedient. But my friends, I can't. When the Bible paints a man, the Bible paints him with his warts and all. He does. 
I wish I could have stopped because here's the second thing that I want to tell you about this story that I read and I apply to my life is the, the, the uh, relapse of Abraham's faith. He had a relapse. Oh my goodness, he did what? He stepped out on faith and he relapsed. That means he faltered. And today you may be faltering. And in 2003 you may have faltered. But in 2024 we don't have to falter. We can say, God, I'm not going to falter. I'm going to have faith in you. I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to be obedient to you. But I wish I could have stopped at his response. But when the Bible paints us, it paints us all of us. He faltered. He had a terrible relapse. We can learn a lesson if you listen. Listen, I'm glad that it's here to encourage you and me. I'm glad it's here because faith falters. And if you sit here and say, my faith has never faltered, you're, you're kidding yourself. We've all faltered. We're humans. We fall short of the glory of God. But praise God, when he died, he died to bring repentance. And he brought to bring the blood. And when he paid it with the blood, we can seek that forgiveness. My friends, has your faith faltered this past year? Okay, here's what happened. Abraham followed God. God spoke, he responded, he went, he did, he followed him. A famine broke out. A famine broke out. What is he going to do now? He said, God, you led me here. I'm where you want me to be. You said to come here. I'm doing what you asked me to do. But a famine hit, Lord. What am I supposed to do? Listen, you may be in the right place at the right time doing exactly what God desires for you to do. And my friends, this is going to happen. He knows God wanted him there. And so he didn't ask God what to do, but what was he supposed to do? There was a famine. They were starving all around them. What am I going to do? Is what he said. So you know what Abraham did? He hot-footed it to Egypt. Isn't that what it says in the Scripture? He fought hot-footed to Egypt. Now, I want you to realize Egypt was a style, uh, was a, uh, a world of sin. That's, that's what it represented, a world of sin. It was a place that had plenty. Now, what's wrong with going to Egypt? What, what's wrong with, I'm starving in my country, so I'm, God, I'm going to hot foot it to Egypt. There's nothing wrong with Egypt at all, especially when they have a land of plenty, but God didn't tell him to. That's what's wrong. God didn't tell him to. And that's where some of us have to wake up. And when God's knocking on our door, we've got to listen when he speaks. And when he speaks, we've got to follow instructions. And this is where we find Abraham. Abraham's faith faltered and he had a relapse. Why did he have a relapse, my friends? Is that he took matters in his own hands because of fear. Fear is destroying churches and Christians today. Isaiah 31 verse 1 says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. He took his eyes off God and he put his eyes on his circumstances. God, you led me here. I know I'm here because you told me to come. I responded. I have faith in you. I believe in you. But God, i got to go find some food. So he, out of fear, he left. And because of circumstances. Did you do that last year? Did you do that in 2023? Have you ever been to a place God didn't tell you to go to? Have you ever been to a place... Where God didn't tell you to go. Now, in the reasons, what were the reasons he faltered? And you say, well, Brother Jeff, I don't know. Well, I want to give you why he relapsed because I don't want you to be confused. And and the 12th chapter, verse 1, tells us the first one. He says, and now the Lord said to Abraham, get thee out of the country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. Now pay close attention. If you are a Bible believer and you respond to God, you get to that place, there's a famine. Do not take matters in your own hands. Do not light your own fire. God didn't tell you to go. The first thing that I would tell you was what caused and what were the reasons of his falter or relapse of his faith is incomplete obedience. Incomplete. He took Lot and the other souls when he left Haran. God told him what in verse 1? To leave his kindred and his father. Did he not? Did you read that just like I did? Maybe I'm just looking at the wrong Bible. But the Bible says don't take them with you. God told him to leave his kinfolks, and he didn't. He took things he ought to not have. And some of us are taking things that we shouldn't have, and then we want to know, God, why is our faith faltering? Why are you not here in the four months of me? Listen, so many people have hangover sins, and they carry them from year to year after year after year after year. We must follow God's instructions completely to not have faith that falters. 
We must follow his instructions. Abraham didn't. He said, don't take your kin, folks. Don't take their possessions. But he did, exactly. If you have faltering faith, you're going to have trouble all of your Christian life. Why? Because of incomplete obedience. But God, you don't understand. I want my family and friends to go with me. God didn't tell him to take them with him. Incomplete obedience. The second reason you'll find in verse 10 of that very same chapter, the 12th chapter, it says, and there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourning there, and for the famine was grievous in the land. Now, my friends, not only did he, the reasons that he faltered in his faith and he had a relapse was incomplete obedience. I ask you, are you truly obeying God completely? Following his instructions to the T. But now listen, you've got to hear God to follow his instructions. And so very often there's so many distractions in the world that we live in that they're fooling us that we're following God than when maybe we're not even hearing God. But the second thing I'll tell you in verse 10 is incomplete dependence. Incomplete dependence. God didn't tell him to go to Egypt. Fear sent him. He took matters in his own hands. That's what I would tell you. Stop taking matters in your own hands because when you take matters in your own hands and you do something that God didn't tell you to do, and listen, some of us are doing things that God didn't tell us to do, so we need to stop it because, listen, if God wants you to do it, if he sends you, he's going to give you the equipment, he's going to give you the ability, he's going to give you what you need to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish. Now listen to this phrase. Don't doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. Listen, the reason his faith faltered was because of incomplete obedience incomplete dependence he started allowing his emotions now listen to me God will never do the deepest things in your life in your emotions your emotions are the are the shallowest part of your human body he's going to do the deepest thing in your soul not in your emotions what led him to to, uh, was fear that fear took over his emotions and he got scared and I want to tell you there's lots of us there's lots of us I would probably say 99% of us and I would raise my hand too that we all worry and fall short of the glory of God we all worry oh I'm I'm letting anxiety overcome me folks we must not allow anxiety when God saved you he he saved you bodily physically and spiritually and emotionally we can be whole in Christ we need to have complete dependence God if you said it I'm gonna do it I believe in what God says don't you believe in what God says and if you believe it then you must follow it and you must not allow your faith to falter but there's one last thing one last thing that I want to point out verse 18 through 30 I mean, through 20, excuse me. The 18th verse, verse 18, 19, and 20. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that thou hast done to me? uh, uh, Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? And why sayest, verse 19, she is my sister, so I might have taken her to me, uh, to me, a wife. Now, therefore, behold thy wife. Take her and go thy way. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Now, my friends, here's what took place. Listen, he had a relapse because of incomplete obedience. He had a relapse because of incomplete dependence. And some of us are depending on our fear when we need to wake up, step out, and believe in God. But the third thing is incomplete honesty. Incomplete honesty. When you get away from God, man starts scheming. Man starts scheming. So bad that he was scheming so bad that he called Sarah, his wife, his sister, so that he may live. I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, we all know, well, he says you're of a fair thing. Folks, if you look around, most of you are married up, not down. Thank God for our wives, amen? Well, there ain't no sense in lying about it. She's your wife. You might as well accept it. And so, my friends, it was so bad even Pharaoh was disgusted. He says, get her out of here with you. You have caused terrible things in my life. You think you're fooling God? Folks, he knows your hearts and he knows exactly what you're dishonest about. He knows what you're doing. Stop scheming. You can't scheme God. And so many people are trying to scheme God. Be real. Say, God, I don't have the faith. My faith has relapsed. God, I have not been completely honest. God, I have not completely been following you. God, I have not had you as my dependence. God, I have not been obedient to you like I should have this past year. If not, you have faltering faith. You see, he had that, that, that 
response was he responded and he did what God asked him to do. But he had a relapse. He had a relapse because he wouldn't follow instructions. Men, you would not have extra screws if you followed the directions. I'm talking to myself too, okay, brother? But I want to share with you what were the results of Abraham's? What was the results of Abraham's faltering faith? What are the results of yours? Well, I want to give them to you. That he, he lost two things and he gained two things. So it kind of broke even, but listen to me. He lost two things. First, he lost time. He lost time. When he could have been following God, he lost rewards. How much time have we wasted in 2023? How much time will you waste in 2024? Before you say, I'm going to step out of my faith. I'm going to get out of the boat. And I'm going to believe in God. And I'm going to do what he instructed me to do. And I'm going to follow him. Now, the second thing that I want to tell you, it may be a little bit surprising to you that he lost. Not only did he lose time, my friends, he lost his testimony. He could have been witness to, witnessing to old Pharaoh if he wasn't backslidden. Now, you listen very closely to me. Please do not try to witness if you're backslidden from Fairview Baptist Church. Do not go out and tell anybody you're from Fairview Baptist Church if you're backslidden. Because we will never win the world with people that are backslidden. We will never make a dent in this world if you're not right with God and you, and, and you start uh, witnessing for Him. Why? Christians out of fellowship with God are abomination to God. That keeps us from bringing people to Jesus. Now listen to this. If you make a bumper sticker of this, I won't credit. The greatest argument of, for Jesus Christ and against Jesus Christ is the life of a Christian. The greatest argument, the greatest argument for Christ and against Christ is our Christian life. Today, do you have faith? Do you have a testimony? You see, Pharaoh died and went to hell, and part of it's Abraham's fault. For, I, I didn't say it was all Abraham's fault. Yes, Pharaoh was wicked. Yes, he was doing the things that were wrong. Yes, he was killing things. But partly, Abraham is at fault if he, was walking, if he wasn't walking in faith. If he had been walking in faith, he could have witnessed to him. See, his testimony, even to Lot. Genesis 13.10 says, uh, Abraham was, uh, over, overcame and Lot never really did overcome. He lost time and testimony. Now, what did he gain? Well, interesting, he gained wealth. He, he gained wealth. He had cattle, silver, and gold. Now, you got to remember, Abraham, when he left, he was a shepherd, and he comes back as a cattleman. Now, I, I thought about that, and, and you know, I, I know I'm a redneck, and I, I'm from Alabama, and I don't know a lot of things, but this is one of the things I did know that I did a little thought about. He was a, uh, a sheep herder when he left. I don't know if you knew this, but sheep have two sets of teeth. Cows have one. So they used to, a sheep used to browse. Do you know what cattle do? They graze. So he left a shepherd. He came back a cattleman. My friends, him and Lot got in an argument over grazing rights that would have never happened if he was walking in faith. You see, there's so much that us walking in faith makes an impact on others. The other thing he gained, he gained a woman. His, her name was Ishmael. Now, my friends, man couldn't trust God in the dark, gained a woman. And today I encourage you, hey, where's your relapse, relapse and your faith started? Was it last year? Will it be this year? Will you be, uh, uh, will you be in complete obedience? Will you be in incomplete dependence? Would you be uh, willing to have incomplete honesty? What will you gain and what will you lose? You see, when I thought about this story and about faith, and faith is believing what God has said, what good is God speaking if people are not listening? And today I want to share with you that we must in 2024 get the wax out of our ears and hear what God's saying. Not what Brother Jeff's saying, not what Fairview Baptist Church is saying, not what some deacon is saying or some Sunday school teacher is saying. I'm talking about what God's saying. And when he says it, we need to believe it. And we need to step out and stop living a life of monotony and live a life of excitement. There's one last thing that I want to share with you about this story about what are we to do when our faith falters. 
And it's in the 13th chapter, verse 1 through 4. If you will turn there with me very quickly. And it says this. And Abraham went up out of the Egypt, and he and his wife and all that he had, lot with him into the, into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. And he went on to his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, and to a place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai. And to the place of the altar which he had made there, verse 4, at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Now, my friend, we've got to realize that there was a response of faith by Abraham. There was a relapse of his faith. But lastly, the return of Abraham's faith. He came out of Egypt, out of the land of sin, back to the house of God. He came back. That means there's repentance. That means there's opportunity to say, you know what, Lord? My faith did falter in 2023. I, I don't teach like I should. I don't sing like I should. I don't tithe like I should. I don't attend church like I should. I'm not doing the things I used to do, Lord. But, but I want to do it new this year. He went back to Bethel when it first began. Folks, we need to find God where we first found him and get pick him up and get busy following him where he is, where we first lost him. And that, where did he lose him? He lost him in the temple. He lost him at, at Bethel where he first began to worship God you see when I look at verse 13 uh, of the 13th chapter verse 1 the only thing is it says he went out of Egypt the first thing I tell you there has to be a separation what are we going to do when our faith falters there has to be a separation Isaiah 55 7 says let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return unto the Lord his God he got, he got up out of Egypt and he went back to where it first began. There must be a separation from last year to this year. There must be a separation of when you had a falter in your faith to having faith that's stronger than ever before. Most miserable person, I've said this millions and millions of times. I've said it multiple times to you, and I hope you'll hear me. The most miserable person in this world is not the unsaved. It's the saved out of fellowship with God. That's the most miserable people in the world. And I don't want you to be that. Folks, we've got to get out of Egypt. We've got to separate ourselves from Egypt. Stop living in Egypt. He came out, and his life began to recover on his faith. Well, the second thing that I tell you is verse 13. I mean verse 13. Verse 13, chapter, verse 3. It says, And he went on his journeys from the south into Bethel into the place of his tent that he had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai. Now listen. There has to be a separation if our faith is going to get back to where it needs to be. There has to be sanctification. He went back to Bethel, the beginning, where God was alive. He repented and made God alive in his life again. Will we repent and bring sanctification? Will we be really ready and willing when the altar call's given and we sing 312 in a minute, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, would we be ready for sanctification? Would we be willing to say, God, I, my faith got out of kelter, but I want to bring it back in 2024. I want to get back on fire for you. I want to believe what you say. I want to respond to what you've said. And I want to realize that I have faltered, and I want to be ready and willing to gain it back again. Folks, it's going to take repentance. It's going to take sanctification. Not only do we need to get out of Egypt, we need to have sanctification. We need to repent and say, God, I need you again in my life. Folks, our world needs Fairview to get right with God again. But lastly, I would tell you in verse 4 of the 13th chapter there. He says, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And then Abraham called the name of the Lord. Now, my friends, the last thing I would tell you, what we've got to have today if we're not going to have faltering faith, we've got to have separation, sanctification with repentance, but we've got to have sacrifice. We've got to have sacrifice. Two things that changed his life. What are the two things that changed Abraham's life? A tent. What? A tent changed Abraham's life? Yes. A tent means he was a pilgrim and a sojourner. He wasn't there to stay. Folks, I don't know about you, but I am not here to stay. I'm just passing through this old world. And God wants to, me to do the, the best I can while I'm in this world because I'm in the tent. We're just passing through. But my friends, what else did he do when he was at Bethel? He started an altar. Listen, an altar means that we trust God with all of our heart, with all of our soul. 
Listen, that altar was in that tent, and he went in that tent, and he said, I'm a sojourner, I'm just passing through. But he says, God, I have an altar. I worship a mighty God. And today, I'm not ashamed of the God upon whom I worship. And I hope you're not ashamed of the God upon whom you worship. Folks, God says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Folks, we need to have sacrifice. We need to be ready and willing to say, God, I'm not worried about my reputation. I'm not worried about what anybody else has got to say. I'm not worried about what's going on down the street. I'm worried about sacrificing for you that others may see Jesus in me. Faith faltered in Abraham. But has your faith faltered? And will it falter in this new year? It's your choice. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I love you and I thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. These are not my words, they're your words. It's right there in the word of God. Lord, as we come tonight and we talk about life's greatest adventure, will we truly come? Will we truly this morning get out of our seat, our uncomfortable seat, and say, God, I'm uncomfortable, and my faith faltered last year, but I want to get it right. And all you have to do is come to the altar and say, Lord, I want to ask forgiveness, and I want you to come and sanctify me. I want to be ready and willing to, to say, I'm separating from Egypt. I'm sanctifying myself. Because, my friends, we've all sinned and fell short of the glory of God. If there's one that judges you for getting out of your seat today, then they're at fault, not you. And, my friends, we've got to be ready and willing to sacrifice We've got to be ready and willing to get in that tent and get on our hands and knees and beg God. Church, are you ready to beg God this new year? Are you ready to say, God, I'm broken and I need you in my heart? See, faith has faltered. And we're allowing it to falter because we're not following the instructions. Because we're not listening to what he says. And so we're so distracted by all the other things. But Lord, will you take the distractions away today? Will you take Satan away and just remove him from us? God, we have power in the name of Jesus to remove Satan from our church, from our homes, and from our lives. And maybe today you say, Lord, I've never had faith. Faith is believing what God said and acting on it. Well, if you've never done that, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I'll fall short. Will you come into my life and make me whole and make a radical change? I'm broken and I'm sinful, but make me whole. Or maybe today you're, you know Jesus. You've had him as your Savior, but your faith has faltered through the circumstances. You've allowed fear to overcome you. That's what Abraham did. He took matters in his own hand. He ran to Egypt. Folks, we've got to get out of Egypt. It's time today to say, I don't want Egypt any longer. Some of us have bathed our minds, our souls, and our beings in this world. This world will die. The only thing that's going to live is our God. May he live in you today. May you leave here with not faltering faith. May you leave here with exciting faith, stepping out and saying, I'm going to follow when it doesn't make sense. Are you that neighbor that came over to Abraham and said, Abraham, are you crazy? Or are you the one that's packing, saying, I don't know, but God told me to? Where are you today in your faith? Gracious Heavenly Father, bless you and direct us now in this time of invitation. You speak that only you can speak. And God, I, may they realize these are not my words, they're your words. And God, may they come to their hearts where only you can make a penetration difference in their lives. But let, will they allow it to penetrate or will it just be another day at worship? That we're glad it's over, it's cold, we're going home, we're going to lock ourselves up, meet some soup. But Lord, that's not going to change anything if our faith is faltered. Help us to allow our faith to be on fire for you again. And let us respond to you. And we pray this in your precious and holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to respond...